Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? What's up? Keep it bent, fam. For those who don't know, for those who may be new, my name is Ice. Welcome to Keep It Bent Outdoors. I've been having a few comments and a few questions about what kind of rigs I was using in my last halibut video. So today we're going to break that down. I'm going to show you guys two different ways how to rig up, one with the spreader, one with the three-way. So we're going to get to it, y'all, and uh, stay tuned. Alrighty, y'all. So to make the rigs, all you will need is a spreader um with or without the beads in my last video it was without it i couldn't find any so these ones are with spreader or you will need a three-way um to connect your weights i use crane swivels uh it doesn't really matter the uh the strength on these just holding your weight and one not mosquitoes key right here mosquitoes are key they don't kill your bait allows that bait to get free flowing and free swimming in that water and that's what's going to trigger our action so for our main line for the leader not main line on your reel but for the leader what's going to be connected to the hook i usually run 20 to 25 pound fluoro um, i'm not really going to go over brands or anything like that because i believe that that is all personal preference um but 20 25 pound that'll do let's go ahead and get this hook out we'll get two we're gonna do two rigs only the three-way we'll do the three-way first so first you do your weight start off with maybe about hmm, 20 inches worth of line you don't need that much when you're halibut fishing you want that weight to be on the bottom so there we go we have the three-way one is going to be to your main line the other is to your bait bottom will be the weight so for this one i'm just going to tie you could tie whatever knot that you would like i'm just going to do a simple san diego jam or clinch improved clinch to Three, four, five, six, and then I just take that in, that tag in, put it through the hole there. You could tie your favorite knot for this. It does not matter. Wet that all up. We're gonna hold that there. Since that baby on down. Alrighty. So that's that. And then we're going to take this crane. Get one of these bad boys out. And I like to go cut that tag in. I like to go probably about 10, 12 inches, no more than 12 inches. And I'll go uh, just a simple polymer on this one. Get that on there. This is your weight. So we want to make sure, um, want to make sure that that weight is close to the bottom. where those halibut are they're gonna be flat fish right so I'm gonna barely want that thing on the bottom eight to ten inches is what I like to do and you could always adjust that you could make it you know more or less depending on how those fish are biting Bam. let's get that cut that tag in that's one part, right? So simple, right? You could tie your favorite knot to your favorite knot. Wait. Now, we want this to be about as long as your arms. Stretch about as far as your arms will go. And I take a little bit more after that. We're gonna cut that. So I got, I don't know, four and a half four foot nah 
It's more than that. Full wingspan. And I'm gonna put that one right here. And do the same. Now on this one, you wanna make sure you tie this knot good. This is what your bait is gonna be on. Oh my, gotta love a new line. Two, three, five. Pick your lucky number. Go ahead and put that through there or whatever your favorite uh, and strong knot is. Go ahead and make sure you tie that. Whatever you're most comfortable with, go with what you're comfortable with. Cinch that down nice and tight. That's that. So that's that. Cut that tag in. You can go Palomar knot, you can go clinch knot, whatever your favorite strong knot is, clip that bad boy on there. And then we're gonna take this other side. And on this one, it's important. <clears throat> You want to make sure you put a loop knot on this mosquito because this is what your bait is going to be on. So take that there. Put that through. And I like to go surgeon's loop. You could run whatever loop you feel comfortable with. I'm just going to put that through once. Oh my, twice, three times, that. Go ahead and wet that thing down. And then we're gonna pull it nice and tight. Until it cinches down. Get that thing to cinch down nice and good. Go ahead and remove that tag in. And there's your live bait loop. That fish is gonna be able to swim all nice and around. And if you don't wanna make your loop that big, you could also shorten it. I like to leave it a little bit longer just so that fish is running all around. And usually that halibut, he's gonna engulf that bait there. That fish is gonna engulf that bait. It'll set itself almost. And there you go. That is your three-way live bait halibut rig. Very simple, works well. Alrighty, there's that one. So, when you're working the spreader, the longer end will be to your bait, shorter end will be to your weight. So we're gonna take that 20 inches worth of line right there, right? Your favorite knot. Just gonna get this here. Again, I'm going San Diego Jam or Improved Clinch. Basically, knots are very similar. I'm not gonna say they're the same, but they're very similar. Put that through that hole. Wet them up. Get that thing to cinch on down. Perfect. So I can cut that tag in. And we're gonna need another crane swivel for our weight. Right? And I want that weight to sit no more than a foot off the bottom, right? So preferably six to eight inches is the money spot. And if you find that, you know, your bait is a little lively or your boat is bouncing, whatever it may be, you can adjust to that. But I like to start six to eight inches. That way you know that your bait is on the bottom. 
I actually got a little too much line on that one. So, grab your line. And again, you're going to put whatever your favorite knot is on there. If I could get this crane swivel going, I'm going to go Palomar. Right? Like we're tying our shoes here. Through that middle hole. Over everything. Make sure you wet it. Cinch them on down. Now that is way too long. But for this video purposes, I'm just showing you guys how to tie it. You want to make sure that that weight is sitting, you know, six to eight inches off the bottom. But we're just going to leave it. I'm not going to cut it, leave it for video purposes. Now, foot long, remember? No more than a foot long. So for your bait line, you want to make sure that you get that one at least four and a half to seven feet. You can go. Um, make sure that you secure this knot to the spreader. Again, the long arm will be to your bait. The short arm will be to your weight. I'm going to go improve clinch or San Diego jam. You could Palomar, whatever your strength and knot tying is, go to that one. Go to that one for sure. Make sure we're going to go through there, through this other loop. Give it a nice wet, cinch them on down, pull them tight. Nice and tight. All right, cut that tag in. There's that. And whatever your live bait loop is, look at this line, gotta love that. Always going to tangle up whenever you need it to, right? Make sure that there are no kinks or anything in your leader line whenever you go to tie that. Make sure that there are no frays. Size one mosquito again. And I'm just going to go surgeon's loop. Oops. You just want to make sure any loop knot, perfection loop, live bait loop, angler's knot, whatever you feel comfy with. For this one, we're just going to go over, like we're tying our shoes. You can go over or under, whatever works for you. Make sure that hole is big enough to fit whatever gauge you are pushing through. One, two times, and three. I wet it. Without piercing yourself, pull that thing tight. And uh, that tag in, give it a snip. And there you go. Live bait loop. Perfection knot. Surgeon's loop, whatever kind of loop knot you would like, works. Just make sure you have a loop. I did the surgeons there, and you're good to go. Spreader's ready again. Make sure that that weight is shorter. I would go six to ten inches. All set. Let's go catch some fish, y'all. Get it. Oh, there you go. Get it. Watch out, you fight it.
Nice and slow. good I'm over here he's just kind of staying down so I'm just working him slow I'm kind of pissed I pulled the last hook so I'm fighting him nice and slow giving him some drag just keeping tension all I can do really he's staying down on me though it might be a good fish or he's just fighting hard he knows how to use his body uh, are, are you towards the shore more me? Oh. I'm just gonna stay here with him and uh, oh yeah, he wants to pull a little bit. Head shakes. Mean head shakes. And then now uh, he just wants to run on me. Hey my buddy say go down there, he's put the left and right to the Hold on, let me get this one in first. I can't horse him. It's a good fish. I got your fifth, uh, line on. It's a good fish. Or like I said, he just knows how to use his body. One of the two. Jack is really loose. Tie a little bit, it's real. Tie a little bit, it's real. Yeah, it's real. Enough to break him real up. So find that thing? Damn, it must be a monster. Yeah, it's real. Is that your 40 inch man? I hope. I'm just taking it nice and slow. He was peeling a lot of drag. Do you think? I'm gonna reel this in. Yeah, it's fine. Leader. Fish, look at the teeth. Beauty. Yes, sir. Dude. Bloody decks. 